So um, I would like some folks to come up, but I'm also going to pepper y'all with questions because I know you like it when I do that. Um, because I've been, you know, talking to members, you know, during peak. And uh, one question I keep hearing is the issue about residents. So if our early adopters have any words for advice for residents, because I think there is some buy-in, but there's a lot of concern of how do we get residents on board. And I know Sharon has a great anecdote about that too, but can we hear from the early adopters about that? We rolled out the lifeplancommunity.org video at a resident town hall meeting, and I wish I could have counted the smiles in the room. But we, there was some concern that you're kind of leaving us behind, that you're, you're, and we always hear this in sales and marketing, that you're just worried about getting the next consumer and the next resident, you're not worried about us. But as we, we wrapped it into its opportunity for them to, it's opportunity for them to be at a party and, and talk about life plan as much. And so then in, from that town hall meeting, we've had small groups and we've talked about it in each of the committees. And as we delve into it a little bit more, and this is one Connecticut, one Connecticut community, it, the, the smiles have come back and we're not leaving them behind and, and just trying to get the ones out, out there, the next one. And I think you're hitting on for us, the, the core reason that we're doing this six to 10 residents at a time is that if you make it part of the conversation, they do get excited about it. I really never thought about the fact that I'm prob probably not the only one struggling with party conversation, but your residents, do they wanna live in a retirement community? Do they wanna live in a continuing care retirement community or are we giving them uh, conversation at their next cocktail party, which is important. Like I said, we took retirement out of our name five or six years ago. There was no rioting or nothing was broken, so it, it was fine. Uh, we use terms like life enrichment. Our life enrichment program is called Adventures in Life. Um, I talked about adopting life plan community and heard no negatives. I do want to tell my funny little story, if I can, Alicia. Um, I have a um, great story from Leading Age Boston when it was first uh, unveiled. Uh, and we had a board member who was also a resident at Fellowship Village in Basking Ridge, New Jersey. And um, she was at my cocktail party and she said, boy, I don't like this new life plan thing. And I said, I understand, I'm really sorry. You know, we've heard a lot of feedback from residents who have gotten used to the term CCRC and they love it. Um, and I said, but you know, would it surprise you to know that people who are just starting to learn about communities like yours really don't like the word CCRC? And she said, no, that wouldn't surprise me. And I said, would you like to have younger people consider your community and move in? And she said, you know, I think I like that life plan thing, so. That's great. Um, just um, a comment, there are some states that do not have CCRC in their regulations, and I'm one of those states. Um, I found the information very helpful, and um, I think we can take some of the concepts, but um, that's why we're not an early onboarding person. What state are you in? Missouri. Okay. Great. Thank you. Yes, there has been some concerns. That's another question I'll just kind of put to the panel. Um, you, know, you know, we have, and Steve, you know, I think you can uh, comment probably on this, is that, you know, in a lot of states are regulated and there's some concerns, so we have been making, we've been seeing some initial movement. Do you want to comment a little bit about the states that have regulations? Yeah, we, we have had some discussions, um, and there are probably 25-ish <coughs> or so that, that have, have pretty specific defined terms in their state regulations state statutes relating to continuing care retirement communities, and there's probably another dozen that have them referenced somewhere. My home state of Washington, for example, um, is just adopting some regulations, um, but prior to that, the only place you saw the term continuing care retirement community was in the certificate of need laws related to who gets to nursing home beds. Um, so it was a very, you know, so it was not a very defined term from a regulatory standpoint, but there are lots of states. We can think of Maryland and New York and Florida, in California, um, that have Pennsylvania, New Jersey, all have pretty extensive systems. So far, what we've heard from the states, and in a couple specific examples, where we've had some state regulators' initial reaction was, "Whoa, wait a minute! You can't do that because you're defined in statute. You can't change your name." But as we've talked to them, and as our state executives from our affiliates have talked to them, 
then the DBA concept is what they're saying. They're saying, oh, okay, so you'll still keep that CCRC and some of your legal documents and, and some of your underlying things, but your, it's your marketing materials and your descriptors that you're going to be emphasizing it. And they said, well, okay, you know, a, as long as somebody somewhere can determine that, that you meet the, that you fall under that regulatory um, terminology, then you're okay, we're okay with you using it for descripting of what your programs are. So, I, and I think that's going to be the reaction of most of the states, and I think you're also right that after we get through this, and as I said early on, this is an evolution, not a revolution, that in four, five, six years, we'll start to see some of the states start to consider making some name changes to be consistent with what we hopefully will be the predominant terminology in use. Right, and we're working closely with our state associations regarding this. So we are, um, they are champions and they're working and they ha they're the ones with the relationships with the regulators. So uh, we're, you know, in contact, but they're the ones who are mainly engaging them. I, I would like to say that in skilled nursing, all of the terms used in the regulations, we don't use those terms in the names of our, our, our small houses or our nursing centers. We, we've changed those terms because they're so institutional. And why wouldn't we do that with residential living as well or our whole community? Good point. Good point. Other questions? Does anybody have any? Oh, here. Here you go. Now that the name has been changed, what's the likelihood that others might come up with other names and a new name might be popular? Uh, we kind of see this with all of the measurement criteria with impact and bundling and always wanting to shuffle up what we're looking at. Uh, could there be a new name that comes about anytime soon? You would like to? Well, I think what we wanted to do was to provide a category name but we recognize that every sponsor is going to have a brand. And um, Mather Lifeways certainly addresses this. They're going to continue to develop their brand, Mather Lifeways, and they're going to talk about it and use the language that they choose to discuss it. And each one of you will as well. But what we're hoping is that, the, that there will be enough understanding of and enough definition of life plan community that it will become um, a two-word phrase that telegraphs the meaning of what we do. So we're hopeful that there won't be other names that compete with it category-wise. Yeah, and it's interesting to note also that we've had some reactions from, and I was at a meeting um, several months ago uh, in December that was had um, a couple significant players in the for-profit side. And they, he came up to me afterwards, one of the, the, the uh, uh, C-suite, and said, we congratulate you because we think that's brilliant. Um, going to that kind of terminology. So I think you will have, as Sharon just said, life plan community I think will stick as the, the, the terminology for the sector and then people will be able to take that and interpret that the way they want within their own framework and use, use other terminology to describe their programs. But um, I don't see it very likely that there's gonna be another term that covers the broad uh, category that we're talking about. And uh, I, I think we're, as being one of the early adopters and the folks that put it up in a billboard for everybody to see, I think that's the approach we're taking is that we, we see this as a differentiating moment for us, a campaign that fits very well with what the field is doing overall, fits with our brand overall, and in six months, 12 months, we'll, we'll have another marketing campaign that we will also have fit within our brand very well. I guess I'll just add that, that you know, we as a task force, we're um, working very diligently to make sure that it could fit with any of the brands out there. Everybody has, has spent a lot of time and effort to build that equity, and the last thing we would want to do is create confusion. Um, you know, so the goal really was to create something that could be, um, you know, presented with any of the brand names. Um, and you know, as I think Doug had said, you know. It, there could be a sense of, you know, that's it, that, that, you know, that's what you came up with after all of this work, but it really is in, you know, supposed to have the power. And I think, you know, after that, you know, I've used the word socialization, we've used the word socialization a lot. After you start to work it into your language, I think it'll start to, to feel more, um, more right and more um, acceptable and, and give you some good fodder for discussion. Other questions? 
Actually, uh, you, you touched on it just briefly, but has there been any discussions with the for-profit side? Any, anybody you've seen early adopters on that, that as I well? Can't, I can't tell you how much they've adopted, but I can tell you in my conversations with two of the significant players that this is in their um, discussions as to how they're going to develop marketing materials and things in the future. So, I, I, you know, I, I, I can't tell you from a fact, because I haven't bothered to look, to be honest with you, whether they are actually using the term, but I can tell you that, that it is in their plans to begin to roll into that. Um, so, and these were two of the, the more significant uh, for-profit providers. And they did, the for-profits did participate in the research as well, um, several of them, and we reached out to them early on um, to mm -hmm. invite their help in this exercise. So, um, while this task force predominantly focuses with not-for-profits, um, we feel like this is a category name that um, goes that transcends that. Yeah, and that was a goal from day one was for it to, um, to to be able to um, play that role, not just for leading age members, but to be a, a, a shift in the whole marketplace. Mm -hmm. And just, if I can add um, just uh, you know, briefly that um, that you're right about I've been hearing comments here about the name being you know, a category name that's rather generic, and I think that that's on purpose to not compete with your brand. So, um, you know, it is, all of your brands are very different. Your offerings are very different, so that is why the name is supposed to be a nice container for you to then elaborate further about your brand. I just wanted to make sure that that was clear. Just want to share a quick story along sure. that line. We have one, most of our clients are not-for-profit, but we have one for-profit that is it's just starting up a, going through initial pre-sales in Salt Lake City. And last fall, we were going through the branding, naming, tagline, and positioning process with them, concurrently with when we were finalizing all the plans. And we couldn't tell them where this was going, but once it was announced at leading age, and then we were able to share the direction, they jumped all over it. They were tremendously excited. There's not a developed CCRC market in Salt Lake City. And so they're really doing much like what Chris is doing at Lenbrook, knowing that at some point in the future it will be a category name, but right now it's not. It's something they can own and dominate in that market. And so literally their tagline is Summit Vista, a life plan community. And the advertising is driven by Salt Lake City's first life plan community. And the tr response has just been tremendous so far. So that's showing that consumers are responding. 